Welcome back. In this video, we'll look at free and open sources of GIS data. We'll be focusing on reference data with a few tips about accessing census data, natural earth, open street map, geonames, and a planning department. The census has done a much better job in recent years of providing easier access to common GIS files like shapefiles, geodatabases, those with demographic data, and other common formats like KML. Data Ferret is another good way to quickly access lots of census and American community survey data. If you've got plenty of room on your hard drive, then you can also order the summary file one and other census data files on DVD. At the end, we'll take a look at how planning departments can also make using census and ACS data easier for users. Next, Natural Earth is a great spot to find global data on boundaries, water, roads, railways, populated places, rivers, lakes, bathymetry, and shaded relief. Before heading to the Downloads tab, be sure to click on Features to, to read about how the data were created, as well as the different types of files, data availability by scale, more about what cultural vector data themes are available, physical vector data themes, and roster data themes. Scrolling back up to the top of the page, if you now click on the Downloads tab, you'll be brought to a page where you can select your data by whether it's large scale, medium scale, or small scale. Next, we'll head on over to OpenStreetMap, the free edible map of the world that is created through user-contributed and volunteer data. You can access data through the OpenStreetMap website, or else we'll take a look in the moment through a plugin in the desktop GIS, QGIS. So I've opened up uh, Dublin, Ireland uh, with the OpenStreetMap base map, and now we'll go up to the OpenStreetMap or, or Quick OSIM plugin at the top. We'll select that. Then under the top drop down box, you can select different types of features. In this case, we're interested in buildings of the Guinness factory. We'll run the query. and the outlines of the buildings will be added on top of the OpenStreetMap base map. Having standards is also important. Geonames and the USGS have your back. Because of the large number of geographic place names, standardization is important. At Geonames, you can download more than 8 million place names, lat long, elevation, other attribute data by bulk download or through an API. One could also imagine losing access to your favorite geocoding service or an address locator. Without all these great free sources of data like you see here, how would you find things? Before downloading GeoNames data, be sure to click the info link and read through this text file for helpful tips on how the files are structured, the different type of fields, as well as other important information like cotton codes for how the different files are separated. There's also information on accessing the different APIs. If your interests are more targeted, then head over to the U.S. Board of Geographic Names where you can download files, whether domestic, foreign, or even Antarctic. Moving from global to local, we'll look at how a planning department can be key for finding great free data that's easy to use. Planning departments, whether state or local, are providing more data to users in easier to use formats. For example, census data. Here at the Maryland Department of Planning website, you can actually download spreadsheets that require very little work to be able to join with geographic files like shape files for census tracts. In this case, you see all the census tracts for Maryland and all the different variables. All you have to do is delete the first couple rows and the data is ready to use. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe or click the like button. In the comments section below, let me know what you'd like to see in the next video. Would you like to see open data portals, novel data like Twitter and Instagram, or remote sensing data?